Hey guys, Boris Hosmer from BK Force. Welcome to our weekly Force segments for 10, 27, 11, 1. Can a dollar go lower? As always, trading point exchange or margin carries a high level risk matter suitable for all investors. I ask you to read this disclaimer very carefully to understand all the risks of share trading and margin and seek advice from an independent financial advisor if you have any doubts. Well, definitely, if you look at it on a weekly basis, it's been a down week for the dollar, the euro, uh, all the way through the 38s now, and holding it. I mean, it's uh, the interesting pattern in the euro has been that we go to 37s, hold it, go to 38s, hold it. But um, as I've been saying for a while, we are definitely entering, in my opinion, into very um, heavily resistant area here around the 140 level. So is there more push for the euro? Certainly, there's possibility here of another 200 points on the euro. But I don't know, or I really don't think, it's going to be a straight arrow up. Um, next week, we obviously have the FOMC, but the week after that, we have the whole slew um, of uh, European and U.S. data. And more importantly, we have the ECB meeting. And I really don't think, despite the fact that the ECB um, has been, been incredibly nonchalant about the high rate of the euro, they're going to tolerate rates at around 140. Um, at very, very least, they're really going to see, see, try and talk it down to 135. So the euro really is just benefiting from its pure anti-dollar status. Um, everybody who's dumping dollars on the assumption that there'll be no taper for as far as the eye can see is flipping themselves into the euro. The one thing they can do to take away that trade right now is essentially um, go to negative interest rates, which has been the big threat, and that's the one thing that could just flip the euro trade completely around. For now, technically, when you look at it, it's just all bulls all the way. I mean, it looks it looks beautiful. It's just straight up two very very strong weekly candles. But of course, generally, when you have that kind of a pattern, you tend to get a big reversal. You know, things always look best at sunrise or whatever the hell the expression is, um, and then uh, um, and then of course all hell breaks loose. So. It, for no other reason than just simply the fact that we're probably um, quite decently overbought at this point, I do think uh, forward motion in the euro is going to be hard to come by. Having said this, though, of course, the next big level, we took out the 3825s um, today, but the next big level is the 3850s. That's the big run stop. And, of course, after that, the 3900s. And then, of course, the really, really mother of all run stops is the, uh, uh, is the 140 level. Uh, so for now... Um, it's slow and steady as she goes, but I wonder just how much more forward momentum we're going to have. I wonder actually if we're going to be sort of in a more of a consolidative phase next week as we sort of do this type of pattern after a big, big move up. It's just been a general tendency of the euro to make big moves and then digest, big moves and digest. So if the digestion zone is going to be sort of 3,700 to say 3,850 on a broad scale of 3,750, we could very well be in this 100-point range just doing absolutely nothing while the, uh, the world waits for, for new developments. Having said this, though, the other flip side of this whole um, dollar weakness story is uh, dollar Swiss, something we don't look at very uh, often, but really worth a look now because we certainly broke this 89 level um, the other day, tested it again today. And to me, the, the dollar Swiss story is actually much more interesting because the flow into the Swiss franc as a safe haven harbor um, is, a, is a very, very important development that's kind of become very stealth, in my opinion. Nobody really paying too much attention to it. What you see on the weekly charts here, of course, is this 89 level is very, very key. It's a long, long-term support um, coming in from over here. There's even a, a little bit of a gap uh, down move. So a break of the 89s that's conclusive, let's say up to 86.50, really opens up a run all the way out down to this, um, excuse me, 88.50 is what I meant, down from 89s to 88.50s opens up this run all the way out to a to possible double bottom test of 86.50. And in many ways, it's this um, dollar weakness against the Swiss that may actually be pushing your dollar higher because the one key thing that you see is that the Euro-Swiss pair, where's my Euro-Swiss? Whoops, sorry, wrong pair. Um, that, by the way, is just an, uh, an incredible story. Uh, we can get to that in a second. Um, Euro-Swiss. Um, you see the Euro-Swiss basically holding its own. Um, it's really not collapsing to the downside. And as the Swiss franc gets stronger, the euro gets stronger um, in default if the euro-Swiss doesn't go down. So um, in many ways, I think dollar-Swiss may be, may be the, uh, the pair to watch, um, especially at 89 level. If we start breaking that uh, significantly, that's going to push the euro higher just on, on the about rebalancing issue. Um, so definitely worth watching. Let's take a look at a pound now because um, – it continues to basically, sorry, slowness of my computer today. Basically, it continues to consolidate here. Um, this is the weekly chart. As you can see, the weekly chart, is, I think, is very good because it tells us a very, very important uh, fact. Look at this. Effectively, let's call it 62 to 63.50, just for argument's sake. It's somewhere around that range. 
um, range. And what you see is a perpetual flame out of this range all the way out to 2012, which is why uh, cable is having such a hard time making new highs because it is just essentially um, flaming out off of this massive resistance for two, basically two and a half years or a year and a half, whatever, whatever a time frame is here. Um, so the fact that we're having a hard time with the 62s, and, and I think the fact that it's just unable to rally gives us, of course, the natural trade to the downside. Basically, if, if they can't bring it up, they may want to try to take it down. 61 is the first key level next week that we got to watch. That gets broken. It really opens up around to 60, um, and then a very, very deep support at 59. So very much worth watching this. If, on the other hand, we can somehow overcome all of this overhead at 62.50, then the final burst here is the 63.50 burst, which is the, 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 the last wick um, on the weekly trade. Um, it's definitely worth watching. Um, as far as uh, as far as the upside surprise goes, but the much more likely probability is that we have effectively a drift to the downside, and as I said, the break of the 6100s really opens up a run very minimum to the 60s um, as profit taking really starts to kick in on the pound. Not too much data on the pound uh, next week, by the way. It's all second tier, but we do have PMI at the end of the week, so we'll see how that trades out. Um, yen. So yen is, uh, as I've been saying, surprising everybody. At its resiliency. Now, it doesn't certainly doesn't look like a very resilient chart, but um, given all of the negative dollar sentiment, given all of the stuff that's been thrown at the dollar, the fact that yen hasn't broken 97, I think, is actually quite positive. And this is a, yet another um, one of those interesting trading. Um, this is what I'm looking for. Sort of trading, uh, uh, not necessarily rules, but observations. That when you have negative news. And the price action does not go down, the probability of price going up increases significantly. Meaning, if they throw everything but the kitchen sink and they still can't bring it down, it means that there's buyers out here at this level that are, that are uh, seeing it as a value proposition. And that all we need is just a small amount of ignition to the other side, and we could potentially have a move through certainly 98s, but then obviously all the way out to 99s. So, for now, as long as yen can protect this 97 level, as long as we sort of stay at the higher low, right? basically around this level. Um, it looks relatively bullish in the sense that it's, base, it, it's creating a base. The breakout here is, of course, if we can close above 98, then it puts 99 square in the sights, and then, of course, a really, really big turn would make a W turn, basically, uh, if we can come back all the way to hundreds, uh, perhaps over the next week and a half. Um, FOMC meeting when? Uh, next week? It could surprise everybody by, by being more, more hawkish, with them saying, hey, we think that all of this shutdown, slowdown is temporary. We think the U.S. economy is, is, is relatively resilient. And we think that maybe accommodation is, um, is going to come off the table sooner than later. You never know. Uh, the point being is the charts are telling us that there are buyers at 97. Until that's negated, you have to give the benefit of the doubt to the upside, not to the, uh, not to the downside. So we'll, we'll watch that very carefully. Uh, and Aussie um, just, you know, taking its usual, not that it's usual, but taking just a basic profit-taking mode here. Um, we are holding about 95.50, which is relatively constructive um, from the time. But basically, this was the big breakout zone. So we are kind of holding above that. We'll see if it can pick up um, steam next week. Not much on the calendar as well next week. And <coughs> excuse me, there isn't any Chinese data as well. So we have to watch if there's any uh, upside potential for the Aussie. But Correction is, is what's happening. A break of the 95.50 really does puts us right back into the 94s. So that could be an intermediate swing term high against this particular high, sort of a double top, maybe a little bit of higher double top, the Aussie forms. If we can consolidate here above 95.50, then the run back up to test the, the highs of 97.50 very proper in the Aussie. Um, so that's kind of how the primary shape up. Um, the interesting thing this week that I think is still worth watching is the weakness of dollar cat. The fact that, that basically Bank of Canada um, said they're going to stay accommodated for quite a long time. And the dollar strength against CAD here above the 104s really puts it into a much more um, constructive move towards a retest of the 105, 105.50s. Um, you know, we've been pressing to the downside, um, but now we've made higher lows. We've taken out the 104s. We've closed above the 104s. So it looks much more constructive for, uh, for loony weakness going forward. And then in turn, of course, creates the, um, the possibility here of this, uh, where am I? Look at this Eurocat. If you sort of trade the relative strength story for the time being, Eurocat is just a monster, and a monster that looks like it has 145 in its sights on any further um, 
dollar cat weakness. So um, definitely worth watching next week. Dollar Swiss, dollar cad, your dollar, all key trades next week as we try to see just how weak the dollar uh, can get um, as it, or against some and how strong it can get against others um, as the week continues. And of course, the really big seminal event is going to be the, um, uh, the FOMC meeting. Um, and at least for now, at least for now, dollar yen is acting as though the news from FOMC is not going to be nearly as dollar bearish as everybody thinks, but we'll have to see. Anyways, that's how the week shapes up. Wishing you guys the best of luck, the best of trading and support. Thanks for over now.